Hi, my name is Jessica and I am a software engineer and a contributor to Prometheus and this is my lightning talk on how to fill in missing data for recording rules. So many moons ago, back in 2013, an issue was created that made this request to have the ability to persist data um, for evaluating recording rules in the past. And I'm happy to say that eight years later, uh, we finally have a pull request that got merged recently that implements this feature. And this talk is about how to make use of that feature to fill in uh, recording rules from the past. And so just a tiny bit of background, what is a recording rule um, in the Prometheus official documentation it shows here, um, has some information on recording rules that they, um, are essentially way to they are ways to pre-compute um, expensive queries and save the result so that you don't have to evaluate those expensive queries over and over but rather the data is, is saved over time um, so here's an example of a recording rule that uh, figures out what is the current network traffic um, per second and um, you could see the query expression example here that gets run. Um, so the problem with recording rules is that the data only exists from creation time on. Uh, when you create a new recording rule, there is no past data for that rule. So um, we're going to use this example through the demo um, of uh, making a rule that tracks uh, the network traffic per second. So here's a config file for a recording rule example. Um, and if you, so when I created this recording rule, uh, then you can go look in Prometheus, you can look on the dashboard. So on the left hand side, this is the query that was executed. And so you could see for the past hour, there is actually data, time series data that exists for that. However, if I just put in the name of the recording rule, there's no data here, essentially, just because it's brand new, so it doesn't have any time series data. So the goal of this is to fill in the past data right here so that these two match. And um, now we have the capability of being able to do that with prompt tool. So I added this feature into prompt tool. Uh, this is the subcommand TSDB, create blocks from rules. Here's all the options. So if you do run that like so, um, you need to provide a start and an end time. So in this example, there's an hour window that we just looked at on the previous chart. That hour window is what we're going to fill in. And then the um, URL to the Prometheus API is passed in. And then the output of the subcommand are blocks, blocks of time series data for this recording rule. So um, providing a location of that output um, directory this is where all of the blocks will be. So execute this command. You can see some logs. It says blah, blah, blah. We're running this rule, processing it. And then afterwards, you can ls into the output directory, and you can see that there's one block created. Um, to inspect that block even further, there's another subcommand. You can kind of see more data about it. So you can see it. Um, it's about an hour here, and there's 70 samples, which the evaluation interval is 60 seconds. So this is about what you would expect. Um, in order to make use of this data in the Prometheus instance, these blocks, once they're validated, um, they need to be manually moved over to the data directory of the Prometheus instance. So I did that. Um, once I did that, you can look in the logs and you could see Prometheus now sees that there's some overlapping uh, blocks. So when the next compaction hits, um, it's going to merge those blocks together. And once that happens, then the data is available back in the Prometheus graph. So back over here, this is the first chart we looked at. You can see the actual query is right here and we have all that data. And then the um, recording rules over here now. And now we actually have all this past data for the recording rule. Um, and you can confirm that it looks pretty good. Um, and that's that. So for future work for this, um, I would like to add a another subcommand that will validate the blocks for you and also move the blocks over to a specified previous data dir just to eliminate those manual steps. And then um, still we need to add stale markers. I'm going to do that soon. And anything else, if, uh, if anybody uses this feature and has any ideas how to make it better or if there's other um, use cases that are needed or bugs or whatever, um, let me know. And then lastly, I just wrote a quick blog post that uh, has
has these kind of the same information from this uh, talk and with a little more detail and links to docs and stuff. So check that out if you want. And that is it. Thanks a bunch.